My name is Nicole, I'm 32 years old, and this is... I'm Court, I'm 34. We are living currently in Alberta, Canada. We have a daughter, Finn. She was born in 2018. How old are you? And we reached financial independence for our family of three, essentially when our daughter was born. part-time in 2019 and so we are still able to save about 50% of our part-time one income because we have essentially figured out how to live a happy life on $25,000 a year. So to keep costs down for our family and for our, our child, we like to buy things secondhand and Court's here to pick something up today. Did we get a game? Yeah. Who did it come from? I love people. So I learned early on when I was in college that I wanted to be in control of money and not the other way around. I had seen my family go through some tough times financially and I realized I wanted my future to be the exact opposite of that. So I ended up with about $70,000 in student loan debt and Nick had 40,000 to her name. And prior to us even meeting, I had paid off my student loans in two and a half years. It was just a personal mission that I had made to get rid of that debt. I was still living pretty much the college lifestyle. I was walking to work, I was not going out too much, but having a still social life with potlucks and happy hours with coworkers. And then once those student loans were gone, I was used to that money going elsewhere anyway. So I thought, okay, well, let me save up for a down payment. It was a natural thought progression. It wasn't, how do we save so much money and pay this house off? It was like, there's a huge house and it just felt natural to fill it with roommates or you know friends, which is what they ended up being. So. It was little decisions like that in our 20s when we weren't letting lifestyle creep increase along the way and instead we kept our spending relatively low and that put us in a really good position by the time we were 30 and we were now talking about expanding our family and having a child, then we were at a point where we didn't really have to work anymore if we didn't want to, all because of little life hacks along the way. From the beginning of our relationship, we talked about money probably more than we should have. Like it was very open. We were always very aware of what we were spending on, for example, to go travel and like where we could save money or not save money. It was just always something that we talked about. I've tracked my expenses and my income since my very first job in 2009. I created a super simple Excel spreadsheet. I was always the number cruncher between the two of us. And when I had learned about fire, I went through the whole rabbit hole. I didn't love my job at the time. And I was like, that sounds great. Like I don't, you know, it would give us flexibility for me to not work doing that, right? Um, and instead of feeling guilty about having gone to school and then getting, you know, not using it, it would make me feel like I had the space and the time to pursue something different. Right now that's parenting, but you know, in the future, it'll be hopefully something else. Hey! Hi, Max! I don't know if we've made up this term, but we call ourselves valuists in that it's kind of a mix of frugality, minimalism, and mindfulness. We're maximizing our life experience but doing it at a relatively low cost. So we've basically figured out what it is that we do value and we've cut out the fluff. We love getting out for hikes in the mountains and in our own town. It's a free way to get a good workout and nature always makes you feel better. Let's go sleep up high. 
know you do, but... She's been convincing me for a while now. She's like, you know you don't need to work your job anymore. You know you can just quit today. Like, you know you don't need to be doing this right now. I'm like, yeah, I know, but I, my, from my brain, I need the numbers to say, yes, you're good, and we are there now. Um, so it's... So she's probably saying, so quit your job right now. <laughs> no, no, no. I, you know, whatever makes you happy, but... There's also a thing called sequence of returns risk, which is essentially if you retire and then the market drops within the first year or two or three or four, your portfolio can be drained relatively fast. We're planning to have a lot of cash on hand so that way if there is a dip in the market, we won't be withdrawing from our stocks, we'll be pulling from the cash, which should hopefully allow for enough time for the stock market to recover and then we can start withdrawing from our investment portfolio. I am very conservative in this and Nick's like, well, if it drops, we'll just pick up a job and get $20,000 or $25,000 that we need to for the year, which is true, likely very true, but I just don't want to be in the position where I'm forced to We have, have to look very different personalities and views on life in general. I'm definitely more the lifestyle, let's figure out a way to make ourselves happy and live that life and live in the now and, and have planned for the future. but. It's not set in stone, nothing's set in stone. You can't plan it all out as much as you The type A planner in me wants to do. Are you ready, Vincent? Okay, on your mark. Get set. Go! As a Canadian, having moved to the States and then coming back, I think what I found to be the biggest change is, or in even reading all the fire things is healthcare. I personally think Canada's an early retiree's dream country. You're looking at more affordable tuition. Also here, you have both CPP, which is Canadian Pension Plan, which is similar to Social Security in the States, but there's also OAS, Old Age Security, and that is not income-based at all. It's just based off of your years of residency in Canada. And then another nice feature is our tax advantage accounts, which are called RRSP, which is like a 401k in the States, and a TFSA, which is like a Roth IRA in the States. You can withdraw from those at any point without an additional penalty. Make sure you cut them all in half. Good job. So we're trying to instill a very strong worth ethic in our daughter and we can show that to her without having a nine to five job. Rather than hire a plumber, maybe we Google and YouTube how to fix things ourselves and then have her help us with those things. So she's seeing firsthand work that we're doing. Whereas if we were to go to work, she wouldn't see what we're doing there. She sees that we leave the house and we are physically going somewhere, but she doesn't know what we're doing when we're at work. So we're showing her how to be a contributing member to society and then getting a job for herself when she becomes you know, older and is able to. Okay. Oddly enough, we have found that it's been a lot harder to come out of the fire closet than the typical closet being a lesbian couple. So we have found that it's harder to tell our family and friends about our financial situation in regards to reaching financial independence in our 30s because money is such a taboo topic. I would hate to have a family member or a friend feel like I'm speaking down to them or telling them what they should do and they're doing life all wrong. Cheers! <laughs> you know, we didn't inherit any money. Uh, we had debt to pay off. We didn't have and still don't have a financial advisor investing for us. You know, we didn't live in our parents' basement. We don't feel deprived in our lifestyle at all. By starting our journey during the Great Recession, when we had you know, over $110,000 in combined student loan debt, that created the landscape to get us focused on money. What do we have? 
This isn't just a grind, 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 head in the sand, just work for 10 years and have nothing to show for it other than this number in your investment portfolio. And now you can suddenly live this magical life. It's all about the experience along the way and figuring out what a happy life is to you.